Real wrestling, I'll be watching boys at WWE, man. My boy Rey Mysterio, the little John Cena kid. Can't, can't oh, yeah. see me, baby. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Time. Guess what? We haven't dialed this in in a minute. So we're gonna roll this bitch back in, and we're gonna give it to y'all real good. Uh, currently, when we or not currently, but what we used to do is we did a lot of uh, a lot of bit of football stuff. We got to show off a little bit of scatty skills and predictable skills. If y'all if y'all are OGs to the game, y'all know exactly about scatty's picks and uh, just how they go. If you and I'm not gonna tell you. If you want to find out, you can go watch it, or you can just. Start waiting. We're gonna start dialing it up here, coming into late summer. But uh, yeah, this is a little bit of a sports pod. It's a little bit, a little bit mix of a different than uh, kind of stuff that what we do normally. We kind of we talk about, uh, I guess, what kind of hodgepodge of sports. Reality. Yeah, like all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we're the boys, man. We love some, uh, love some sports. So we're gonna start it off with a little story time. Story time from my true friend, my beloved podcast partner. He says. Calls himself Scatty. He's a little bit of a rat, but uh, DFS <laughs> tennis story rage. Tell me a little bit about this because he he got me dialed up. He said ask this question, so I'm I'm here to. Yeah, uh, you have no listen. idea what I'm about to talk about. I'm here to listen, baby. Tell yeah. me what it is. Do you know what uh Do you know what daily fantasy is? Yes, I do. You taught me this. You did. Yeah. You so you have for those that don't. <laughs> yeah, terrible. <influence. laughs> yeah. For those that don't know, you basically create a lineup based off players. So for example, if you were doing like football, it's basically yeah. literally like football, fantasy football, yeah. but each player you have um, has a salary and you can determine, yeah, you know, there's like a $50,000 cap and you have to stay under that cap. So like, let's say fucking, I don't know, you're going to draft uh, Patty Mahomes. He's yeah. going to be like 15,000 and you have to draft. Yeah. Expensive. Then you have to draft a running back, like say Nick Chubb, he's also 15,000. You're already at you know, 30,000, you have 20,000 left for all these other positions. So you got to stay under the salary cap for that. So what I did was my dumb ass, bro, to keep myself busy at work. Yeah. I'll oh, throw I know some... what you do at work. You love fucking yeah. running out there. Work. <laughs> yeah. I'll throw a little bit on tennis. Um, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, dude. Well, that's the only sport going on right now that like plays at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., yeah. 9 a.m., right when I'm at work. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll do that. But, um, I got super sendy on Monday. I made six different teams and how this tournament works is it's yeah. $15 an entry. And yeah. what you have to do is you have to have a captain, an assistant captain and a regular like bench player that still plays, but they just occur regular points. So okay. captain scores one and a half times the points and assistant captain scores 1.25 times the points of a regular player. Okay. And so what happened was it was, uh, it was the big boy contest. So two, it was $2,000 to first place. Uh -oh, and okay. bro, all my other teams were trash, or four of them were trash, but two of them had the potential to hit the nuts, as we call it. I could have hit, hit the, the nuts. Wait, hold nuts. on. What the hell is hit the nuts? <laughs> yes, because I'm a virgin when it comes to all this. So I'll tell like, you it means like the nuts means. It mean, yeah, it means winning the contest. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I could have won the contest, but yeah. dude, it was so fucking stupid. Like, in order for that to hit, you have to have all three of your people win the mat or win the uh, win their uh, match. Yeah. And I had all three people win. I had them win in straight sets, like two really? nothing, two nothing, two yeah, two nothing, two nothing, two nothing. And I had the exact same build as the guy in first had, but he had his captain switched with one of my lower level people. He just had it in a different order, but the same people. And there was only like a couple people with that build. And dude, I have never raged more in my life because had I switched one person around, I would have won two K. Really? Damn. Yeah. I was so mad. Damn. I was like, I was so oh, close because uh, the matches were going on. They were. Uh, I was on my lunch break and I was like, my my hand was shaking because I was like, holy shit, I'm about to win 2K. I'm about to win. I'm about to win. <laughs> I was already thinking of how I'm going to spend the money. I was like, damn, I'm going to get a new TV, a new sound. Yeah, box. dude, all oh, you're playing it out. You're you're just yeah. there, You know, you're hitting up the girl. You're like, hey, we're going here tonight. We're eating here. Exactly, bro. Oh, and daddy. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just had them in the wrong order. I had the right team. I just had them in the wrong order. So get what? I, guess what? I walked away with instead. What probably like fifty or fifteen or something? Forty bucks. Forty bucks, damn. I could have had two hundred. Damn, bro. Or That's 2, tough, 000, man. But dude, yeah. since when? Did, since when do you know about tennis? I mean, I don't know. You couldn't know about tennis. You know a little but... bit. I like watching. Oh, um, dude. My dad's, my dad's been into it, yeah. So okay. I, uh, I always grew up watching. So I always. Papa like Scad throw a little bit of cash on tennis. 
Uh, he has, yeah. Okay. He likes okay. doing little parlays on tennis, but dude, I'm not gonna lie, your degenerate ass has taught me everything about betting. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I, I current, I currently reside in the Carolina, so uh, I'm not allowed to. Thank goodness. But you did tell me about DFS, so I'm gonna have to tap into that. Yeah, you know? DFS is fun. Um, it's it's pretty cool because they have these big contests. Like I'm in one for tonight, baseball. Yeah. Um, it's I think it's 40k to first place. So I just like it because it's a little. I mean. It's a lot harder to win in this, but the payout is a lot better. Yeah. Like you had someone at work that win, right? You had someone. Yeah, at work so one of my win. buddies, um, shout out JP. He he won. JP, uh, talk about JP Morgan. If any of y'all are curious. Yeah, he won sixty eight thousand dollars, <laughs> but uh, he had to split it with. The, he got first place, and they had to split it three ways. First oh, place, if he'd won it alone, he would have won like three hundred k. Damn, really? But, uh, yeah, but because uh, there was like a three way tie. He had to split it like sixty-eight thousand each. Jeez, that's so, nuts, man, dude. I would, yeah. dude. I would be running around licking a tit if I won that shit, boy, dude. I would be hype as hell, dude. I'd be, put, I'd be pushing every grandma if I was winning that, dude. Playing what do you, what do you think's better? Do you think like parlay? What, like what interests you more? Do parlays interest you more, where you can maybe have a better shot at winning? Because the way this is, it is super hard to win. But the yeah. payout, like what you could get, is so significant like for example yeah. us open this pack week past weekend um first place got a million bucks second place got like a quarter million Dang. and it, like it went down each but there was one hundred fifteen thousand people that entered yeah so it's Dude, like I, the way i bet bro i so i have two ways i have one way where i'll do like I'll put like three bets in, three or two bets together, and then just like put like 50 or close to 100 on it. And then I'm like, it's more of like odds are not as great, but I try to avoid parlay as much as I can. But if I do parlay, I'll put like a $5. Like I'll, sometimes I'll just do like a $5 and bet the fucking slate on NFL and just like, you know, just, just, to, just to goof around. Dude, there's been sometimes I've made it into, um, I've made it into like the fourth quarter of uh, I guess the four twenty five games. I'm like, yeah. oh fuck! I'm like, oh fuck, bro! Dude, oh, got you know what it is? After this, yeah. You want to know what it is? It's always the last game that ruins dude. you. Comment right now if it's if if you go seven out of eight on parlays, eight out of nine. If you're always one game away, comment right now because that is literally me. Yeah, bro, dude. I don't know if I fall short more in talking to women or falling short on uh, my part. <laughs> Both are just complete misses, dude. Probably talking to women, huh? <laughs> Dude, it's just so so bad because when I do the parlay, because like you said, I don't know how many times I've I've like I'll bet the Monday night game. We're just gonna put it there, you know, just to put it there. And then you're sitting there, and you're like, bro, I just put it there, but like, fuck, is this gonna hit? Dude, it's like, you wanna I hear a crazy it. beat? I it though, it's like a double my money. You wanna hear a crazy beat? There yeah. was like a game last year. It was like I think it was the Patriots versus the Vikings. I remember yeah. this. It was a free bet. I threw a hundred dollars on a three legger, yeah. and I bet like two upsets, and those all hit. And then I had the Patriots, which was like a plus one twenty five uh, underdog or something like that. Yeah. And dude, they were up by a touchdown with like five minutes left. It was a hundred to win like twenty three hundred. Really? Yeah. And uh, I was downstairs at my. I think it was during Thanksgiving or something because I was home for whatever reason. And oh my God. Uh, I was like flipping shit, dude. I was so fucking pissed off. I mean, it was a hundred dollar free bet, but. Two twenty three hundred dollars I could have won had the Patriots just hung <laughs> hey, on. But hey. I got fucked by Kirk Cousins, so fuck you, Kirk. <laughs> Dude, if I've learned anything from you, it's that whenever Scatty has someone on the line and has that last one that's on the line, it's you can't spend hit it, your bank account on the opposite. Because yes. it's going exactly. to hit. It's going to hit. Guaranteed. Um, yeah, but dude, I mean, I guess to turn kind of into some new news, uh, let's 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 dive into some UFC because I know uh, you be oh, loving yeah. some UFC and that boy Poirier be doing the thing. Yes, sir. Put it on Poirier, baby. Yo, who would? You, okay, if you're sitting here, you had a chance to meet either Dustin Poirier or um, Joe Rogan. Which one are you picking? Oh, which dude, one? I think I'd say Joe Rogan. Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. Okay. Joe okay. Rogan. He's so Joe. influential. Okay. The only reason I was asking, guys, he's a huge Poirier fan. So, uh, so I was trying to see like where his uh, where his alliance lies. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, talk about it because we got two ninety coming up, two ninety one and uh, two ninety two. So um, yeah, just kind of dive into a little bit and just talk about Poirier's fight because I know you're probably already scheming up what's going to happen. Oh yeah, dude, I'm gonna send a fat old bet on Poirier. <laughs> They pay for our Euro trip, huh? Dude, dude, talk about the bet you sent last time, or was that for his last fight that happened? When uh, went no, it was the most. No, it was the most. Uh, who was it against? I think it's against uh, Oliveira. Okay. When he fought Charles for the title, I thought he was gonna win. I threw like how much did I throw on him? Like two hundred bucks. Like two fifty. Like, 
Two fifty, yeah, you know, something like that. But the thing was, dude, all your bets hit, and all that was left was Poirier. And you're like, yeah, yeah, dude, I got this. Like, this is easy. And then Poirier, I had a cash out and everything too. He was the favorite. <laughs> like, it was a decent cash out, and I was like, dude, I'm not fucking cashing out. This is my boy. I'm not gonna yeah. sell out my boy. Yeah. Oh, bro, it was funny as shit because when I came to Tech, and it was like the first couple of weeks, and this is in the beginning. You're like, if you want to do one thing, because you were telling me about betting. He's like, if you want to bet one thing. You bet, Dustin Poirier. To this fight. <laughs> I put my life savings on this shit, and that's all he turned about for the longest time. So when it happened, I remember watching. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, it's it's happening. Dustin's gonna decide it. Like, he's he's dialing it up, and uh, yeah, that was funny. So y'all y'all yeah. got to tune in to some of these bets. We're gonna start rolling out here. Oh yeah. Now. Well, we'll kind of talk about Poirier first, because uh, we kind of brought it up. But UFC two ninety one, he's fighting uh, Justin Gaethje for the BMF belt. Do you know mm-hmm. what the BMF belt is? Dude, when it comes to UFC, bro, I know absolutely nothing. So enlighten me, please. So the BMF belt was created by Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz. And okay. Jorge Masvidal won the fight due to doctor stoppage. But the BMF belt stands for baddest motherfucker belt. And, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, That's a tough belt. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's tough. They, last time they had the uh, the Rock bring it out with uh, Dana White. Oh, and hell The Rock yeah. threw it on uh, Jorge Masvidal's belt. But since Jorge Masvidal retired... Um, Poirier and Justin Gaethje, two legends of the game, are uh, are fighting for it, and um, that'll be a good fight. Right now, the odds are currently minus 125 in Poirier's favor, but it's basically a pick 'em. Okay. Um, both fighters have looked really good in their past couple fights, so it'll be inter- interesting to see. Yeah, I know um, you're betting. Uh, you know, you oh yeah, you know how I'm betting. You, but... <laughs> I just I just worry about the leg kicks from Gaethje. Um, he th- he probably throws the hardest leg kicks in the game, but Poirier yeah. is really good at checking leg kicks, so maybe that'll neutralize it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I feel like at that point, you're just, you're, everyone you're fighting, bro, you got something to worry about, dude. Everyone can freaking oh, yeah. take level. anyone out at any point. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's really just, I feel like at some point it comes to endurance because yeah. I mean, a lot of times I feel like a lot of times they're just going pretty long when they're at that stage. Um, yeah. But, dude, I know you start talking about wrestling, bro. I see the real wrestling I'll be watching, boys, that WWE, man. My boy, oh, Ray yeah. Mysterio, the little John Cena kid. Can you oh, yeah. see me, baby? Yes, sir. Dude. Yeah. See, that was that. That's what I know. So when you were talking about wrestling, dude, that's what I started thinking about wrestling. Yeah, but that's all fake. That ain't, that ain't real. Fake? No, it's completely real, dude. It's never been fake. What are you talking uh-huh. about, <laughs> dude? Back in the day, though, dude, that was a different kind of wrestling. I don't know if you've ever watched documentaries on it, but dude, back in the day, dude, they were like brutes. Because now oh, they're yeah. really smart about like how they do. I guess how they do moves and, you know, like how they're like landing on people and throwing people. It's very technical now. Dude, back in the day, though, it used to be completely different. I don't know if you watched it, but Nelton Boys put out a podcast with Hulk Hogan. And they were talking about, too, like, dude, back in the day with wrestlers, they also had to defend themselves, like, out and about. So say if you were a wrestler back in the day compared to now. Compared to now, like, you could go out and about. Someone, like, pushes you, like, hits you or whatever. Like, like you know, you're not going to do anything because of, obviously, social media. But back in the day when you did it, you had to fight him. You had to, like, you can't let no one beat your ass. He was saying, like, if you had someone beat your ass, like, they would fire you in the WWE or WWE. So that's that's kind of, like, crazy, bro. Like, imagine you're going out there, bro. People are just trying to start shit with you. So, I mean, yeah, back in the day, dude, wrestling was fucking nuts. Oh, yeah. But uh, continuing on, UFC 291, I'm just going to talk about the the, co- the, the main events here because you know, I could talk forever about the other fights. But... Jan Blahovich versus Alex Pereira. Uh, that's yeah. going to be a really good fight. Alex Pereira just lost to Izzy in a brutal fashion. Gotten fucking knocked out. But, Izzy. Uh, Izzy needed to come back. Yeah, Izzy, yeah. No, he needed to win that. But yeah. Alex Pereira is moving up to uh, light heavyweight. Um, he used to be a fight at one, uh, fuck, what was it, 170. Or no, not 170, uh, 185, sorry. And uh, he's fighting Jan Blahovich. Jan Blahovich is a wrestler. Um, there you go, Matt. R- a little yeah. wrestler, but... Alex Pereira is a world champion kickboxer, so I think if Jan Blahovich can take him down, you know, could be a could be a long night for Alex Pereira. Yeah, I think um, I'm trying to remember. I guess um, I was thinking of Brock Lesnar when we started talking about wrestling. But he did UFC at like one point, I believe. But uh, oh yeah, dude, he was a world champion. Yeah, he was fucking nuts. But dude, I wanted to ask though, because I don't know, dude, when's the boy John Jones fighting again? Because uh, oh yeah. Because, I, I mean, I'm assuming he, he kind of fought somewhat recently. I don't know what are they, they usually like fight like once a year or something like that. Yeah, um, it depends. Usually it's like two or three times a year. It just depends on how active they want to be. Yeah. 
Dude, but, I, um, no, watch, I love John, watching him fight though. And his highlights. Yeah. Did you did you watch his most recent fight against? Yeah, dude. Dude, Joe he Gunn. tore up, bro. Like everyone was talking about, like, oh, you know, he's not fought in heavyweight and all that, dude. Nah, dude, he showed his shit up because he's the same guy. That guy he beat is the guy that you bet. I think you bet four when yeah. we did our fucking parlay at our house. So if anyone wanted to know. The guy we rented out speakers in our old house, and we were like, all right, guys, let's just rent out these speakers. Whatever money we make from it, we're just going to put it on a bet. And everybody, like, dialed up their own little bet on, like, what they were going to do for it. And, uh, yeah, that was one of Scatty's. Yeah. He betted against that guy. So that's, that's how I remember that. But, uh, okay, moving on here, UFC 292. Yeah. Um, Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. Dude, I really hope uh, Sean O'Malley wins. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's I've he rolls deep name. with the Nut Boys and Bradley Martin and Steiny yeah. and all them. Um, I'm I'm hoping O'Malley wins. I I the, a lot of people don't like Aljamain Sterling just because he's a bitch. So I'm really hoping Sean O'Malley can pull that out. And then the co-main John Way Lee versus Amanda Lemos. Uh, John Way Lee clearly is going to take that. That's not even a fucking competition. Yeah. Dude, now, I do want to mention shout out Ian Machado Gary, the yeah. reincarnation of Conor McGregor. Okay. Um, he's he's an up and comer. He's fighting the gatekeeper of the division, Jeff Neal. So, I'm hoping Ian Machado can uh, take that one home. But um, yeah, that's a little bit about UFC, dude. For uh, Sean O'Malley, that's the guy who has like the rainbow hair and everything now, right? Yeah, 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 dude. Have you ever like listened to a podcast with him? He's pretty intelligent. Well, yeah, but dude, his like situation, bro. He's got like a whole ass wife. Oh, got... They're like very open relationship. He can yeah. do whatever the fuck he wants. I'm like. Bro, how the hell? I don't see how these people get away with that. I guess because once you start making money and you get into the lime life, it's like, you know, oh, yeah. like the woman's going to like, she starts to kind of like, she's going to have to like learn to live with some stuff, you know, because it's, they just, I feel like they got all that money. So it's like, you know, it's it's not going to be all like how it is. Like say, for instance, if me and you got, had, were married, uh, you can't be in an open relationship because I mean, like you don't have that, like you're not that guy, like unless you just made fucking bands, then maybe you could do that. Um, but dude, I was curious what you think about all that. Cause personally, I mean, I don't know. I could care less about all that, but, uh, dude, that boy was talking to me. That man's a dog. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a baller. I don't know. I mean, it's just what works for him. I mean, he, if he keeps winning, just keep doing what he's doing, you know, don't yeah. change it up. Dude, you yeah. know what? I wonder what's interesting. Multiple yeah. people say like, you shouldn't nut before a fight to build up the range. Yeah, I've heard but that. But then yeah. some people say they do. So it's like, I think it's just very person dependent. Yeah, I, I do. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes, dude, I feel like I'd be losing some tests after I do it. So, I that I mean, I can I can understand like why some people say that, or I see too where people say like they don't try to have sex like anytime like during that fight week, like coming up to it, they try not to like do that at all. So uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, we got dial into the next segment. I don't really want to talk about it, but we're just gonna talk about it on here. Uh, so last weekend, uh, Scotty came down to my house. And uh, we had we had a couple of drinks. We we're having fun, and uh, all of a sudden we found our way onto the pickleball courts. And uh, let's just say I took a fucking fat L on the damn pickleball courts. So some bullshit. I at one point, at one point, guys, one point the score. What was it like? Eight to zero, nine to zero. <laughs> and I was sitting there. I'm like, dude, I was sweating on that other side. I was like, I was like, dude, how the fuck have I got myself in this situation? And then, dude, I came all the way back to, like, tie it up, or I was, like, up one, but I ended up losing. But, dude, that was – I'll be honest, that was a match, bro. I was – dude, I burned some calories during that shit. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good workout, dude. That that was my first time ever playing, too, so let's let that be known. Uh, you just got beat by a first-time player. Um, <laughs> dude, all I do is play my fucking sister and play some grandma, so uh, chill, daddy. Well, I've never even played at, at all, I. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, nah. we know Scotty's been practicing in his basement. I've nah, only practiced ping pong. No, nah. nah, dude, you got your ass kicked, and uh, you still. No, no, no ass did not get kicked. Ass did not get kicked. I'm than you. I just I'm lost. Than you I just lost that day. But uh, you know, maybe at one that point day, we actually I'll beat get you right now. Bro, if we get a foundation of actual followers, maybe we could do a charity event one day for pickleball. It's just me and you dicing it up, and let's just play this. Every every point we lose, we lose a ligament, and then we just go oh, from yeah. there. I think the charity is called the Ryan and Matt Foundation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, just fucking put it in their pockets, so. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, it's for charity, guys. <laughs> yeah, for charity. You just see, like, you'll take the money, and Sky's just gonna slowly put it into his pocket. Charity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, it'll just reinvest it in the podcast, so you're only helping us. 
Yeah, yeah, dude, that'd be funny to clip this up one day. We actually come to that event and all that oh, shit. Yeah. That'd be funny. But be uh, yeah, no, like I don't know about y'all, but uh, in the sports world, pickleball has like picked up hella. I feel like a lot of people do it now because tennis was a game. Like you know, you really, if you're not good at tennis, you can't get away with like like being kind of okay and it's still playing with good people. Yeah, dude, pickleball, you can be kind of mediocre, have a good partner, and you can still like play pretty good, and you can still get away with some things if you're mediocre, but. Uh, dude, I mean, I don't know. Pickleball's fun. Dude. I love pickleball. Yeah, I need to find some courts up here and someone to play with because I, I had fun the last time we played. Yeah, for real. For but real. Uh, yeah. now let's move on to golf. Yeah, it's Mr. Mr. Uh, what was his name? Is Wide Wideum Wideum Clark? Right, you're still saying it right, dude. I'm, I'm not saying hey, it's right. a ten forty. Huh? It's a ten forty, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to create some moments here, guys. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mr. Clark, yeah, he's uh, dialing up because uh, tell me tell me about his guy because I've not been paying attention. To, yeah, uh, no, what, you Wyndham know, Clark. That's how you pronounce his name, Wyndham Clark. But he uh, he tore it up all weekend. He had a really good tournament. Um, there was... Oh wait, is this the guy who has a tattoo on his arm with his like dad who's been playing in the PGA? Like, no, so that's that's Sam Bennett. Sam, okay. He, okay. he just turned pro, but his dad okay. passed away as well. But yeah, I'm, I've seen some stuff of him. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he, I can't remember where he went to school. Maybe Auburn or something like that. But no, Wyndham Clark won the U.S. Open this past weekend. And uh, if you're watching this, this was uh, recorded on June 20th. So, um, but yeah, Wyndham Clark lost his mom recently to breast cancer, and mm. and uh, he came. He he held his own, dude. There was a couple of high pressure shots like. I think the purse for that tournament's like four point some million, and all he had to do was two putt from like, I don't know, fifty feet out to win it all. And dude, he put that his first putt from fifty feet out was like, maybe he put it within like three feet, two feet, and uh, it was perfect. Like there was no way in the world that I would ever be able to three putt from there for four point two million dollars. Like that's. Could you imagine the pressure of that? Oh, but dude, you know, it's like when people have that situation, like say for instance, mom passed or some situation that currently goes on, bro, I feel like you have to hammer them because there's just some kind of aura around them where it's like, dude, they're it's like all they see is like they're they're winning this shit. Like they're locked yeah. in. I don't know. It's like that. It's always some kind of like little edge that just gives it to them. I mean, I mean obviously it's like the, the kind of weight of the situation that happens. But dude, it's always like whenever you hear a story, like I always think like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Who's the best right now, dude? You need to hammer this person because they just they have something going for them. Uh, but dude, there's been some cool stories going in golf recently. You had that, then the one guy I was talking about the tat, then the one dude who was um, he worked at some golf club not too long ago, but he ended up hitting a hole in one on a golf tournament recently. He popped off. I, he, he did pretty decent. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know who you're I talking about. I fucking forget his name. Though. I don't know his oh. name. But, um, yeah, that, that was a pretty freaking cool story. The guy, he ended up, I can't remember, somewhere around Cali, I want to Michael say. Michael Block, I think. Yeah, dude, that was freaking sick. Imagine working, yeah. being the pro at a, a golf shop and then coming out and showing out in the Durham tournament. Dude, that was oh, nice. Yeah. That's and insane. Then, what? Did oh, you see the? Uh, did you see that recent video too? It was like some guy made some super long putt, but he like won the tournament. His buddy went to come out and like throw the champagne on him or some shit. Oh yeah, he got and the tackled. bodyguard smacked his ass. Yeah. Well, Dude. no, it was actually a golfer on the on the tour. Adam oh, was it a golfer that hit? Yeah. I thought it was, it was like a bodyguard. Team. No, it was a famous golfer, and they got tackled because he was going to celebrate. It was like his close friend or something. No, 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 no. no. Uh, the, I'm saying a, a bodyguard tackled him, though. But I was saying yeah, like, I that was a that was a, that was a, a famous golfer that was doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a famous golfer that got tackled. Yeah, dude, that was nuts, bro. That dude put a good shoulder in too. He was like, oh, yeah. like, dude, tech, it looked like some Oklahoma drills, bro. He's rolling that shit in. Like, damn, yeah. boy. Dude, I got yeah. a question for you. What's yeah, going what's on with your boy Rory? We were talking before. My the boy time. Rory, fuck yeah, out of here, getting, Rory. You're getting Hell pissed off at Rory because let me set the scene for you. Going into Sunday, uh, Wyndham Clark was ten under, Ricky Fowler was ten under, and Rory was nine under. So he was one shot back at the lead. So talk talk to me about Rory. What's I'll going on? I'll be honest. Rory? Ricky's for the boys, so it's okay. Ricky's always been for the boys. He's like a cool cat, but dude, I just don't like Rory, man, because all that shit he came out talking about the PGA, talking about live and all that. He was like such a brat about the whole thing. I was like, bro, who are you even talking about, dog? I mean, yeah, you're sponsored by Taylor, man. You got all that stuff, but 
Dude, he, he hasn't been shit since when? Like eight years since he won something recently? I mean, I, major, it's been yeah. fucking it's forever been since you've actually won something, actually been competitive. So, I don't know. It's just it's just kind of annoying hearing him. I just see his curly hair and, like, his, like, little nose. He, he just gives me that kind of vibe. He's like a nose-up kind of guy. <laughs> so, I just I, – I don't know. He just rubs my skin a little wrong. But Yeah. Um, Your yeah. boy Ricky, though, he, he sucks on Sundays. Like, he's so bad. He just cannot <laughs> figure out how to finish the tournament. Like, I think he shot four over. Yeah. That, yeah, that damn, that's pretty so. bad. Well, wait, you said he was like, well, you said he was minus 10 at some point? Yeah, no, yeah. He was tied with Wyndham Clark going into Sunday. Damn. Yeah, poor Ricky. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I mean, ever since uh, ever since the days of him in the bright uh, orange, just, you know, striping it out, looking like a freaking nut, uh, he really hasn't been the same in a long time. But he got my respect. When he came on the Note Boys pod, kind of chirping a little bit, having some fun, uh, I enjoyed listening to him. So he, Ricky's for the boys, but uh, yeah, dude, Roy, Roy can get out of here, man. I can care less about that cat. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But it's been a good pod. Though. I mean, we're wrapped up here at the twenty-five minute mark. Uh, yes, is there anything else you want to drop in? No, let's wrap this bitch up. I think we we covered it all. All right, well, let's close her on out. But hopefully, y'all enjoyed this kind of sports pod. Like I said, we haven't done this in a minute. We're gonna try to start tapping into these a little bit more. Uh, rolling into uh, especially football season coming up because we're big football and fantasy guys. Uh, but, yeah, let us know if y'all kind of like this content. It was kind of a little bit everywhere, but just basically stuff is going on now. So uh, appreciate y'all's time, and uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and flick that notification bell like a bane. See you later. <laughs>